Hello everybody and welcome into a rare Saturday morning upload. My name is Bradley and in true strategy game 4x fashion, I am about to hop into the humankind Lucy open dev for the first time. I've never touched it. I've never opened it. I have no idea what's going to happen and I wanted to bring you guys along for the ride. I know a lot of the content we do on this channel is civilization related and I'm so excited for a civ competitor and humankind to be releasing in early next year. Some of the people I've talked to about this game as we've been talking about it on Twitch. A lot of people have been asking, is this going to be a Civ killer? And that's not how I like to think about games, right? I love Civilization. A lot of you love Civilization. And I think it's nice and it's healthy to have another game in the same vein with the same types of things going on. That is, that is something that can compete with Civ and make it better, right? I think if we end up with an amazing Civ 7 or whenever the next Civ game is uh, and an amazing Humankind game, I think having two great amazing games for us to dig ourselves into is awesome for us. So we're about to hop in here. I have no idea if Humankind is going to be amazing or terrible or anything. I haven't really looked at it. I haven't really seen a lot. I watched the first couple minutes of both Theus' YouTube videos and that's it. So my hope for this game is that through this open dev and through us getting to experience the full game, that it becomes a civilization competitor and both games can influence each other and can both become amazing as a result of it. And that's my hope. And so I hope you'll join me. If you enjoy this type of video, let me know in the comments if you're excited for Humankind, what you think of the open dev, whatever it is. Do, do you want to see more Humankind content on this channel? Whatever you want to let me know, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, let's hop in to the Lucy Open Dev of Humankind. All right, we are in the Lucy Open Dev. I am not recording this live, so I tried my best to get all the audio levels to the appropriate. I'm looking at my little audio meter here, and I think things are good, but you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments. I think things are all right, though. I haven't touched this yet. Other than to look at the AI difficulty, we're just going to go on casual. I know nothing about this game. I didn't play the last Open Dev. And so I really have no idea what's going on. Uh, but I like this, how it's not just like, <laughs> it's a very small thing to enjoy, right? But casual, if this was Henry V, the French would have won at Agincourt, which is awesome. Or it's like, how do you say that in French? A Agincourt? I don't know. Anyways, if the British had been like this, the US would still be a colony. Like, oof, okay. So, <laughs> so this is what it feels like to go up against Attila and Genghis Khan. So very cool little descriptions for the difficulty. We're going to go as casual. I'm assuming this is Lucy. These other people have names. I guess these will be the AI that we are playing against. It says right there, AI, and this is us. So I suppose we are, I was wondering why it was called the Lucy Open Dev, but I think this makes sense. What a picture. This is definitely gonna be the background of the YouTube screenshot. Also current era, Neolithic. I'm assuming that's like ancient era and current culture, nomadic tribe. So do you always start with these? I assume you always, I know humankind is a game where you build on your culture. So you have your culture for one era, maybe, and then you add another culture on top of it. So you end up making like this big culture sandwich as if you peel layers of paint off a building and it has all the layers of paint previously, kind of like that. And so maybe you always start as a nomadic tribe. Oh God, okay, small beginnings. Your objective in the Neolithic era is to survive and reach the ancient era. Okay, that makes sense. Explore the lands with your tribe and enter the new era through one of three means by cultivating your knowledge your population, or hunting animals. Understood. All right, we have a tribe panel here. I assume this is our starting unit. Is this a settler type unit or an army type unit? I'm not really sure, but I clicked on it. And we're here in this tribe panel. Your tribe is the core of your empire. In order to increase its population, so this is our core. This is the core of our beautiful empire. I do like the zoom in and out function so far, so that's good. Anything with a clunky zoom immediately turns me off. It's like going to raid somebody on stream and finding out like they don't have a good microphone or a camera and you're just like, ah, oh, man. Every time you find food, this meter will grow. Once filled, you will receive a new unit. Fascinating. So we will receive a new unit by finding food. Good to know. I like these descriptions. Disorganized, but still effective with their simple weapons in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it seems like once we get 20 food, we get another tribe unit. So it kind of seems like that's already queued up for us. Interesting. Army actions. This is like a movement type mechanic. Claim territory. Found an outpost in any neutral territory consumes all of the army's movement points. So if I claim an outpost, 
do I still get to move this unit? Or can you claim an outpost anywhere? Oh boy, this is a lot to figure out. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so the first thing I figured out, just clicking all the buttons to find out what they do. We have yields on the tiles. Tiles, question mark? Yeah, they're kind of like tiles. We should see if there's any like lines in the option to define the tiles. But so far we have yields. This is kind of like Civ mechanics. There's some production, some food, some science and some vision range. Fascinating stuff. If we hover over here, discoveries can be made by the first army coming here. Discoveries can be made. This looks food related, and this looks like research related. So what I'm wondering is if I found an outpost, right? Like what if I want to move here? Could, do I want to found an outpost on a two production three food type of thing? I'm not sure exactly what we're doing here. Like, I just don't know if I settle this city or make this outpost whether or not I can still move this. I assume you can. Your tribe has spotted a food curiosity. <laughs> That's such a cool name. Harvesting it will help your growth meter. I don't know what this is. A food curiosity. What the hell is that? Move your army onto it. That's this. I'm going to found this outpost right here. I'm going to claim this territory. Three science, two food. I don't know if this is good or not, but let's try it. Cannot be done without five influence. Where do I see my influence? All right. Fine. Let's go move up here then. You've discovered something valuable. Finding this curiosity increased your knowledge as shown in the meter. When it's full, you'll be able to leave the Neolithic. All right. So at the end of our first turn, I'm going to go discover this food-based thing discovery over here. There's a sanctuary over here and there's some baddies up here. Some kind of fighting combat-based situation. <laughs> this is so fascinating. I love learning new games. All right, so I've discovered the wild berries here. I also think I'm going to use my influence to start settling cities here. I got 20 influence, so I don't know if that means I can found an outpost, like how many outposts I can found, but I think this is starting to be, they've got some money over here, some food, a little bit of production and knowledge nearby. I don't know how big cities are. I don't know how big they're supposed to be. I don't know exactly what these types of cities can do, but let's found an outpost here. All right, nomadic tribe, we are outposting, and that's perfect. Time remaining till the end of construction, seven turns. Interesting. All right, I kind of want to try and attack these guys, just because I don't know how combat works, and I think that'd be fun. I don't know if these guys, are these guys AI? Are these guys like barbarian? I have no idea. All right, we found nuts. New notification. The humankind encyclopedia will be available in a future version. So do I want to keep making outposts is kind of my question. I'm not sure. Like, I just don't know what is the most efficient way. We have a lot of influence now. It kind of seems like I might want to keep making little outposts for myself. Did you notice that your army gained a new unit? Harvesting food curiosities, hunting animals, or ransacking lairs are the best ways to collect more food. So now we have two units. Oh, so it's not a separate thing we can move around. It just makes this one unit a little bit stronger. Fascinating. I'm going to come and settle another outpost up by some of the science stuff going on up here. Cannot be done without 50 influence. Jeebus, man. So they increased the price. I wonder what this sanctuary is. This is a lair. Destroy it and you will stop the associated animal from spawning and earn a large amount of food. Be careful. The inhabitants usually roam the surrounding area. Use the ransack army action on it. Uh oh, we got an elephant... Or like, uh, that's like the dude from the Ice Age. All right, we got some sort of like tusky elephant going on. Um, I would like to settle this outpost here. Plus six food, plus two science, plus three, or plus two production, plus three science. Yeah, let's do that. All right, all right. So apparently that was a peaceful animal. Animals can be hunted to collect more food and increase your growth meter. But hunting can be dangerous, so choose your prey carefully. Peaceful animals such as deers and ma or mammoths, that's well, not tusky elephant, will not attack you first. So take your time and make sure you are stronger. Interesting, all right. All right, we're going to ransack the sanctuary. Cool, so that's going to take a minute to do. I can appreciate that. It takes, it takes a while to destroy the lair of an animal. Your actions have been rewarded with fame. During the Neolithic, you can win some more by discovering natural wonders or achieving either of three Neolithic objectives. 
Fame allows you to leave your mark on history. From what I know about fame, this is how you win. It's just by having more fame than everyone else. You are now able to adopt a culture and turn your tribe into the people of the ancient era. Aw, oh, yeah. So there's 10 different cultures. I don't really know what that means yet to choose from. So if I hover over this, it'll tell me. Ooh, I got to click it. All right. I'm going to look through some of these and pick one. All right. I think I'm going to go. I just need to, I just need to pick something simple, kind of like the Rome of humankind here. Just something that kind of does things that I'm relatively familiar with on my first playthrough here. So I'm going to go with the Mycenaeans. Modify unit production cost uh, reduced by 25%. So I'm assuming you can modify units at some point and that cost is just reduced. That's fantastic. This guy also looks like a complete badass. Plus 25% experience on creating unit on city or outpost. So that's good. I like creating units. Uh, we haven't so far seen any kind of building mechanic in the cities or outposts. So I have no idea how that's going to work. Unlocks the buyout action. Now all of these unlocked the buyout action. So I'm assuming that's just an ancient era shindig to be able to buy things out. The Cyclopean Fortress. One combat strength in combat for units adjacent to the district easy to understand plus five fortification on neighbor and minus five stability i don't know what that is on city or outpost if a is a land unit is forfeited i want to say that's probably if a land what oh sorry this is two different sentences is a land unit spawn is fortified increases the movement point cost of tiles within range of one tile for hostile enemies this just seems good. I just like this. We're just going to go with this. I would like to confirm the Mycenaeans. Oh, yeah. Next era. Just kidding. I've got to move my guy first. All right. We're going into the next era. This is nerve wracking. What's about to happen? Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up. I'm with so the sorry for how loud this is. Honestly, so sorry. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. That was the coolest thing. I'm going to turn that down in post, so uh, I don't know if I need to apologize for the audio. That was so cool. That was so freaking cool. All right, we're in the ancient era. Let's rock and roll, baby. All right, this is going to be my first attack. I have no idea what happens, but the preview has a lot of blue and not a lot of gray, and so I think that's good. It says this is a hostile animal, though, so I kind of want to get rid of it? Question mark? I don't know. I don't really want to kill bears, man. I, I work at a place where bears come and say hello all the time. They're quite nice. So we're going in the city. This is the confirmation phase. You've engaged an enemy in battle. If this was a mistake, you can cancel the attack. Interesting. Uh, no, it's not a mistake. Your side is stronger overall. Will you stand and fight? What do you think? I'm a coward? The deployment phase. Good God, there's steps. There's steps to bear killing. You can move your unit anywhere you want on your side of the battlefield. This is a good moment to use the terrain. Elevation will give you better vision and combat strength bonuses. Forest tiles reduce ranged damage and rivers decrease the combat strength. Let's move your unit. When you are satisfied with your unit placement, you can use the auto battle or manual battle button to start the fight. I mean, I'm already on a hill. Oh, it's not in my... I can't attack from this little mountain onto the bear. What is this? Oh, so I have three separate. Oh boy. I like this uh, three pronged attack strategy. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. End deployment. The battle round. Oh my God, this is so cool. Every turn there are five battle rounds. Jesus. Of course, huge battles can last much longer than five battle rounds. It's like a game of Quidditch. Just lasts forever. And so can take place over several turns. As you advance through the air, as the number of battle rounds will generally increase as the number of units engaged in battle rises. The first empire to act in battle is the attacker. Moi. 
They play all their units and then the defender plays. Each unit can only move and attack once per battle round. Oh, that's easy enough. Hovering the cursor over an opponent's unit while having your unit panel open allows you to see the confrontation simulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just start bear killing, all right? How do I confirm this attack? Oh, here we go. It's a right click. Oh, that's not really... I would have liked this guy first. I think this guy's a better shot at it, you know? Oh, but now I can't because the bear... My unit's in the way. Oh, I'm an idiot. I am such an idiot. All right, let's go around. I can attack here, though. Cool. Yeah, do that. Oh, bear's dead. Sorry, Mr. Bear. You gain 20 gold, so it's kind of like you got like a little pillage at the end. This is neat. This is fantastic. All right, they lost a unit. We didn't lose a unit. We gained 20 money. I don't know what money is or what you can spend it on, but cool. Before placing your first city, let's study the terrain. Use this button to show you the grid. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we're going to need this grid. I don't understand what's happening. Understood. Yeah. I love what's happening. I just don't know at all what's happening. You know? It's one of those feelings. So how do I... Can I turn this into a city? Is that possible? I can make an outpost relocation. It takes 11 turns. That's a big yikes. City creation. I'm in on this. The city sounds sick. Can I do this for both? No, still two turns till this is an outpost. Yo, this is going to be a city for sure. Oh my god. That is so cool. So now it starts giving me stuff. Two science per turn, two money per turn, nine industry per turn, food and sustenance. All right, all right, all right. I am in on this. This is so cool. Balance policy. Gotcha. I gotcha. This is so neat. All right, so the only thing I'm not understanding is the stability. So it says that as a percentage here, 89% stable. But when you go to build a district, it gives it as like a minus five. So is that minus 5% or is it just minus five? I have no idea exactly how this works. And I don't want to take too I want to discover it. I don't want to take too much time to really figure it out. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to build a farmer's quarter. I want nice, big, beautiful cities here. Let's build a farmer's quarter. And I can add it to this already farmy like tile. I'm going to try that. Neat. And so that's building a farmer's quarter. Awesome. My researchers are idle. Okay. Wow. So I can choose to defend myself a little bit. I can get some horses, it looks like. Oh my goodness. We can get a calendar and some granaries. This is nuts. I'm going to go for carpentry. I like the idea of archers. Uh, maybe this is just my sieve talking. I like the idea of ranged units being able to help protect me. So that's happening down at the bottom. This game is so pretty. Can I change the name of the city? Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm not going to change it. I just know that we can change it. Interesting. A matter of diplomacy. As a civilization of similar stature to your own empire, this newcomer is likely to be an ally or an adversary. That's the two options. Thanks, humankind. For many centuries or even millennia to come, they seek the same goal as yourself, to build a legacy that will never be forgotten. You have just met another empire. From now on, you can communicate with them or left-click on their diplomatic icon. Diplomatic interactions will have important consequences from map sharing to trade, from alliance to war. Cool. Ooh, okay. So they got a little city down here. Not very fortified. Interesting. Not a high population. Feels takeable, maybe. <laughs> Imagine going up to someone and going... And this is where I greet you, madam. I shall tell you of all my ambitions and all my master plans. <laughs> all right. Um, I don't know what I want to do here. Do we want peace with these guys? Trade. Okay, first, I think we have an idea. I, I, I think we have an idea. So they've, what have they? What is their proposition? Now, forbid new trade. Only trade luxuries. Oh, I'm going to refuse this. All right, Lucy's telling him off. I like that. Yeah, the answer's no. 
What do you mean by that? Get out of here. Get out of here. Alright, we're gonna go kill that guy at some point. We're gonna go kill that guy at some point. Uh, I'm gonna come here and grab this Saffron. I'm gonna try and trade Saffron with him. Do you just have to walk up to the Saffron to take it? No. So wait, is it automatically just here? A vivid fragrant spice used in dyes, perfumes, medicines, and of course, food. Grants extra resources from tiles, producing the corresponding resource plus five stability on all cities. So how do I acquire this? Okay, interesting. Interesting stuff. Let's just keep exploring then. Ooh, so I just attached both my outposts together and now I have a really big city. I'm into this. All right, carpentry has been researched, which is awesome. I'm gonna try and found another city, I think. I don't know how many outposts you wanna make into one city. I think these guys are gonna be a little bit of a problem. I'm gonna try and expand up in this direction, maybe down here a little bit and get another outpost and create a second city just so I can play with the mechanics a little bit more. All right, I really like the idea of getting an outpost kind of in the middle of all this. Lots of production around here, a little bit of science, some food. I think this is probably smart. I'm gonna build an outpost here, question mark. We need 40 influence, so we're two turns away. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'm a pretty big food guy, so I reckon that granaries are smart. Animal barns might be a good idea. City defense might be a good idea. I'm gonna go for granaries here. All right, we're gonna construct an outpost over here. I have no idea if this is a good idea or not, but there's production, there's science, there's some horses around here, there's some mountains. There's just a lot going on. Let's do that outpost now that we have the influence again. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. So now the only thing I wonder is, how do I choose which... Can I choose which of these little hexagons here my city's working? Also, our stability is going down. Minus 20 stability from number of territories. I don't know how to fix that problem. Calendar is researched. Fantastic. We've unlocked the artisan's quarter, which is awesome. We've gained some population, which is nice. Wow, this is beautiful. This is absolutely stunning, this tree. Holy smokes. Um, I'm just gonna go through the tree as it comes. Let's just go domestication, then maybe city defense. Let's not overcomplicate it. All right, now we're seeing some more people on the map. I don't know what this means for me. I have no idea what's happening, but this is so beautiful. I'm really vibing with this game. I really truly am vibing, and I wanna go through this again, obviously after I know everything. Wow, it's just stunning. Your civ has gained a civics point. World deed. Oh my goodness. What is happening? I don't know what any of this means. What is a civics point? Also, we fixed this problem in my, my kine here. Are we still dying? We're still losing stability. How do we fix this problem? Can we fix this stability issue? So now we have a farmer's quarter which is awesome for us. It's giving us a little more food, which is amazing. Is there anything we can construct to increase stability? It doesn't seem like it. So I'm gonna have to study the stability a little more. I'm pretty in on grabbing. Ooh. I'm pretty in on grabbing an archer right now. Let's grab an archer unit and see what happens here. I also think this is a wonderful point to cut the video. I've been recording for about 40 minutes, which, which means once I cut up the video a little bit, it'll probably be about 30 minutes long, which is perfect. I am really, really enjoying this game. Obviously, when Humankind comes out, the full release will be posting lots and lots of it on the channel. If you enjoyed this video, though, let me know with the like button and let me know in the comments. Do you want me to play the rest of this? I'm not really sure exactly how to go uh, about posting the Humankind Lucy open dev but this game it's very civ like but there's definitely some mechanics in it that are very very different and unique and i'm i really am thoroughly enjoying this which is surprising because i'm such a civ guy and i don't really play a lot of the other 4x and strategy games and this is really speaking to me so i'm i'm super into this game there's still a lot to learn there's still a lot for me to go through but if you enjoyed this video, again, let me know with the like button and the comments. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of this kind of stuff 
on the channel. Otherwise, man, this is so cool. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.